Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Ellen Barrett, and as you can see, we have some beautiful additions to the set today. I just love it. It's giving me some outfit envy, actually, and I, I kind of want to buy and put on everything that we have here today. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm joined by the ladies over at the Velvet Button Boutique over on Monroe Street. Thank you so much for being here today, Karen and Rhonda. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So first off, just tell us a little bit about the boutique for those who maybe haven't been there or haven't stopped by on Monroe Street before. Yep. It's, um, it's a women's clothing boutique. We have fun apparel, we have gifty items, artist made jewelry, um, accessories, upcycled handbags. It's, just, it's a great space. And something we're, for everybody. Something for everybody. You can give yeah. us the whole outfit too, it looks like, you know, from handbags can, to... That's right. We can do the whole thing. Perfect. And then where are you guys located? We're at 1925 Monroe Street. We're in Madison. Okay. And it's just two doors down from Brasserie V. Wonderful. I love that place too. So yeah. many great places if you haven't been down to Monroe Street. You know, you can go to restaurants, you can shop, you can do a, a little yeah. bit of everything. So it's a great location. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> tell me a little bit about how you two ladies met and what was your reason for opening the shop? Oh gosh, we met way <laughs> back in junior high. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. So special. Yeah. And um, we just both always loved fashion. Uh -huh. And so over the years, whenever we would get together, we would seek out little boutiques and um, go shopping. Oh, and something we all love. Most ladies love, I sure do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So we would always chat about, um, it would be so much fun to have our own little shop and how we would decorate it. Wow. And it just was the right time we decided we'd needed a change in our careers yeah. and um, Velvet Button Boutique was born. How long have you guys been open? Uh, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And going strong. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it's cool. great. And I, I think it. that's, you know, every little kid does that when they're little and, you know, they're playing, pretending maybe they have a store. Mm -hmm. um, I know for me it was always grocery store. Or then, you know, I'd set up clothes on mm -hmm. different mannequins and lay them out and do like a fashion show or a runway Fun. show. <laughs> so that is so cool, you know, yeah. kind of turning your dreams into a reality. Right. And what a good example, too, for different people who are maybe thinking, I need a career change and I want to do mm -hmm. something that I love. Yep. That's yep. just fantastic. And yeah. you guys, I know, are different, too, than other boutiques. So what sets you apart? Um, you know, what sets us apart is the nice mix of designers we carry. Mm -hmm. We have um, a lot of designers that are exclusive to us. And we have a lot of designers that carry really versatile pieces. Mm -hmm. So we're able to do several things with one piece. That is um, so cool. And I know I've seen that on your website. And I'm yeah. just like, what? Yeah. I didn't even know yeah. this was possible. This can do <laughs> nine oh, different so things. This is a great example right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nine different things. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Can yeah. you just like overview some of those things? You don't have to go through all nine. But. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, the video is on our website. It's oh. called The Wrap and it can be a That's skirt. Nice. It can be, this can be several different dresses. It can be a little kimono. Wow. Great for travel because you need yeah. that. Some of our basics and you're... You're off. You're That's good to fantastic. Go. And you know, you can really invest in a nice piece that you mm -hmm. can wear a variety of different mm -hmm. ways. And right. you know, you're not going to look like you're wearing the same shirt maybe a few times throughout the week. Or, right, right. You know. It's great. It's great. That piece. is so cool. Yeah. And um, I know, like you said, you guys just carry a variety of different things, but which do you love the most? Mm. So many piece? different things to choose from. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I have a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe what do you love the most about owning your own business? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we have tried really hard to create a really warm, relaxing, fun mm -hmm. place to shop. And so we love it when we, women come in, they enjoy their time mm -hmm. and feel fantastic. And we love it when they walk out of the shop and absolutely love what they purchased. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know that's how I actually met you ladies. I just had popped in and was mm -hmm. looking actually for a game, um, which, you know, maybe you wouldn't even think that you guys would carry, mm -hmm. but you do. And you guys were so just welcoming and inviting and mm -hmm. that really, that experience is, is huge, I think. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We try hard yeah. with that. Wonderful. So I know we talked about the things you love the most. What is the most challenging with owning your own business? Oh, gosh. I'd say the most challenging has been getting everybody to know about us, to sure. know that we're here. We just wish everybody knew about us and could mm -hmm. come in and Wonderful. and love their wardrobe. Well, let's do that today then. So everybody, okay. if you <laughs> haven't been there before, you need to get down to 1925 Monroe Street. Yeah. 
Suite 120, and it is just, like I said, a beautiful street. If you have some shopping to do or you have an afternoon free, um, it's definitely a spot you want to go. So thank you so much, ladies, for being here. I appreciate it. Mm, thank thank you. you so much. So Karen and Rhonda with Velvet Button Boutique, Talk of the Town will be back right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm joined now by our news partner, and that is WILD, the Wisconsin Institute for Learning Disabilities and Dyslexia. Thank you so much for being here today, Irvin. You're welcome. Yeah, it's nice to be here again. Wonderful. And he is the executive director over at WILD, and you experienced dyslexia yourself. That's correct. And I know um, that's something that you and Rich kind of dived into the last time that you guys talked. And I kind of just wanted to continue that conversation. And I think that's great for other people to hear who may be experiencing dyslexia. And it's good for them to hear that testimony from someone else. So what has been your experience in the educational system, and in particular high school, with dyslexia? Yeah, it, getting through the elementary school was, was hard enough. But actually, by the time I got to high school, I was so far behind because I couldn't read. Mm -hmm. I couldn't spell. I was embarrassed. Um, and of course, all of the labels that uh, I, you get as sure. a, you know, I was a behavior problem. Um, so, you know, the teachers pretty well had me labeled as, and convinced me that I was stupid. And so at age 16, I dropped out. Wow. Uh, and um, and uh, I, I went into the military when I was 17. So I had a year wow. break before I went into the military. But High school was, was pretty hard. I mean, when, when you really think about it, if you can't read and you're in high school and you're in the ninth grade, um, it's, it's hard to imagine just how frightened I was oh, to absolutely. read out loud or to do anything academically within the educational setting. So wow. it was difficult. Now, did you know you had dyslexia at the no. time of high school? No. Wow. But, well, back then, <clears throat> back in the 60s, there's a lot of the baby boom generation that were never identified because actually the public law 94-142 didn't come out until uh, 1977. And that's when they started identifying learning disabilities and dyslexia in the schools. Wow. So I dropped out when I was uh, 16 in 1966. So I missed, I missed that part okay. of the law that would have helped me. Uh, and, and education then taking 10 years from 1977 to 1988 to get caught up to, to find out what to do with those kiddos that couldn't read. Sure. So, yeah. Wow, and I'm sure, like you said, what a scary time, you know, to not have that be diagnosed and not sure what's going on with you. And it's nothing that was your fault, you know, and especially, too, in, in schools and the education system. And it's, it's fantastic now that we can diagnose that and we can yes. um, help people with different organizations like yourself, not only, you know, whether it be educationally, but also, I think, you know, on a um, more deeper level, too, with the effects that that has on yourself. Absolutely. And what was that like, too, being an adult learner? Well, <clears throat> while I was in service, uh, I went to uh, GED classes and a lot of things to help me get a better grade on my GT score in the military, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I failed at all of my educational endeavors while I was in the military. It took me 12 years to get my GED um, just by going year after year to guess on the test, and then I finally in 1980 correct, uh, correctly guessed all of the answers that I needed. I got a 45.6% I got on my GED, so I, I got my diploma in 1980. Wow, 12 years. 12 years of just going back and, and retrying and, and guessing at the answers and so on. So, yeah. Talk about perseverance. <laughs> Goodness gracious, wow. So when did you end up being diagnosed with dyslexia? In uh, 1982 when I was in college, UW Oshkosh. Okay. And um, long story short, my, uh, my VA counselor said, you know, you're failing. You got to keep your good grades up or you can't get funded. He kind of saw the, the hard work I was doing, so he sent me over to the testing center. And I got tested and found out I had dyslexia. And at that point, I wasn't reading above the third grade level. Wow. And when so I was 32. Was it a relief, in a sense, to find out, you know, that it... Oh, it was. I, I cried. And, oh. uh, and the, the, the psychologist, Dr. Glica, says, well, Irv, I didn't mean to... I said, no, I'm, I'm not crying. I'm happy because I finally have a reason or, or knowing yeah. what's going on. Sure. I mean, you know, just telling yourself you're stupid just isn't good enough through, you know, 32 years of your life. I mean, it's, sure. but now there's an answer. And 
there was somebody that can do something about it, and somebody taught me to read, read at the college. Wow. So that's, um, that's a good thing. So going from there, kind of what has been your journey? Well, my journey has been, uh, there's two sides to my life, the mm -hmm. blue side and the happy life, and, and it's learning how to read that got me uh, into education. I was a special ed teacher for 30 years, wow. and now I'm, I've opened a nonprofit to help people who struggled like I did to learn how to read. Wonderful. And ran out of time, but we could talk probably for quite a long time <laughs> about this. And such a powerful story, and I really appreciate you sharing it because that's going to mean a lot to a lot of people. Maybe you're going through something totally different to just yes. know, you know, don't give up and seek out help when you can. You bet. Thank you so Good much, advice. Irvin, for being here. I appreciate it. Okay. And that's our news partner, Wild, and Talk of the Town will be back right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm joined now by Tyler and Stefan of Brittingham Boats. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. So for those who may not have visited you guys before, just give us a little bit of a background about what you guys do right sure. off the bat. So Brittingham Boats um, is right off of John Nolan Drive downtown. And uh, we opened up uh, three seasons ago. So wow. this is our fourth season. Exciting. Uh, we still feel relatively new, sure. but we help people access the lake, get out on the water, have a good time. Awesome. So why should people come out to play? So I think the, the simple answer to <laughs> that question is we help you have fun. Yeah. Uh, Madison in the summers is all about our lakes. Absolutely. And yet there's a limited number of opportunities to get out on the water, have a good time, and that's really what we focus on. From the moment you come down there to having ping pong tables and hammocks and lounge chairs to relax by the water, we also help fit you with the right boat. Make sure you uh, really enjoy your experience, whether it's in a tandem kayak, single kayak, paddle boat, row boat, fishing, or on a stand-up paddleboard. That's awesome, and it's really nice to have that resource because some of those things, maybe you enjoy doing them, but they are quite an investment if you want to buy it yourself. They really are. And, you know, maybe I know for me it's something I like to do, but I also like to mix it up. You know, maybe I want to go canoeing, but then I want to try paddle boarding, and I don't necessarily want to put all my money just into one thing. That's right. One of the uh, great ways to do that is we still have a limited number of memberships available okay. where you can buy for a one-time fee and gain unlimited access to all of our boats. So if wow. you want to switch up, go for lunch on one boat and then come back uh, in the afternoon and go out on a different boat, it's a great op uh, option for you. That is so awesome and it lets you kind of experience everything and maybe you're in the mood for one thing in the morning and something else in the afternoon. Yeah. So that's great. So what do you guys have new coming up you know, for this season right now? Well, we have a lot of new things, but um, what's gaining traction the most is still stand-up paddleboarding. Uh -huh. uh, by far our most popular watercraft that we have. Sure. And all of our other new events are starting to revolve around paddleboarding. Like okay. stand-up stand paddleboard water polo, stand-up paddleboard yoga, Wow. Uh, glow paddles, um, now lots what is of different that? things. Glow paddles? Great question. Um, we deck ourselves out in glowing attire. Um, and we're going to do a paddle out in front of the Monona Terrace. It's on August 5th. It's a Friday. And it uh, matches up with Dane Dances. Oh, that is so much fun. And just kind of, you know, a way to do paddle boarding, maybe if you enjoy that, to kind of mix it up and do something a little bit different. Yeah. Very cool. And so this is kind of a question I had, too. So what is the best date activity to promote summer love? <laughs> Good question. I would, uh, I'd say any time that you get out with someone and share a unique experience yeah. is a great date. Uh -huh. So anytime, any boat. If you need to work on your communication, mm -hmm. I would say a tandem kayak is a really great relationship oh. builder. So it's not only just for fun, you're really <laughs> you can really work on some good communication too. by making sure you're timing your paddle strokes. Um, however, really any any boat, any day is a great opportunity to get out. But if you are looking for that special activity on Monday, uh, July, what is it? Uh, I'm just June. trying to, huh? June 20th? June, yes, 20th. June 20th. Sure. We have our first full moon paddle where okay. you can go out, paddle at night underneath the full moon. We have a band oh. playing, we have snacks, treats, and even a campfire in the middle of the lake to go around. Uh, so it's really a, a unique opportunity to, to get out with someone you care about. And then the other opportunity would be our sunset paddles. Mm -hmm. So you can go out as a group, go out, enjoy the sunset, looking back at the, the city as the sun goes down. How romantic. 
<laughs> so if you're looking for something to do, you guys have quite a few different options. We really do. And that's so nice too. I mean, I love going to the movies, you know, just as much as anybody else does. But it's like here in Wisconsin, you've really got to appreciate the summer months. Got to take advantage of the days that we have. You do, absolutely. And so a lot of different things you can do there at Brittingham Boats. So that's fantastic. And so what are the most um, must-do summer events coming up for you guys? And I know you mentioned some already, but just to add on to that. Right. You know, I think that uh, we actually have mentioned uh, quite a few of them, whether it be the full moon paddle, uh -huh. the sunset paddles. But we also do a number of different lessons. Um, we have stand-up paddleboard yoga. So if you want to take your yoga practice out onto the water, that's a great <sighs> opportunity. And the, we're very excited about the stand-up paddleboard polo. Um, How does that work? So. It's pretty neat. We have specialized I'm paddles. It in my head. <laughs> specialized paddles that allow you to both paddle and scoop up a ball, pass it back and forth, and shoot on a goal. And it's basically similar to non-contact lacrosse on inflatable paddle boards. So it's hard to get hurt, but you are falling off. So it's as much fun to watch as it is to play. It's a it's a pretty neat activity, and we're one of the very first in the country to have this. Very cool. So if you're looking for something new, head over to Brittingham Boats. Thank you both so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thanks. And Talk of the Town will be back right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. A familiar face today on the show. I'm joined by Peggy and she is the Soap Nut Lady. Thank yes, you so much I for being am. here today. Thank you so much for having me back. So for those who may be thinking, what is a Soap Nut? Enlighten us, please. Okay, a soap nut it grows on a tree. It's part of the lychee family, uh, Sependus mucorosae. If you've ever had the lychee fruit, it's part of that family. Um, you'll notice when you see in the side of them that they're all shiny, and that's the natural soap part. And so we start with the soap nuts, and then we turn it into the concentrated powder, and then we turn it into the pods and into the bar soap. Wow. And one thing that I want to make really clear is because there's a lot of challenges right now with the Tide Pods, the children eating the Tide Pods and whatnot and having dying and comas and oh, things. Oh, goodness. My pods are all made out of a non-GMO cornstarch. You can eat it all. Everything on that <laughs> table you could eat. And the worst thing... I don't thing, think you'd want to. No, it doesn't but taste you could. good. But you could. <laughs> And um, the worst that would happen is you'll be getting some poo pants because it's soap. <laughs> but other than that, it's all totally safe and ecological, doesn't hurt the earth, doesn't hurt you. So this is something that actually grows, it a grows. soap nut. It grows on a tree, a beautiful, beautiful tree. I import it right now. Um, wow. It grows at the base of the Himalayas. Um, but we are working with some local farmers, local as in the United States, sure. to grow them here. Very cool. And just out of curiosity, how did you hear about soap nuts? Well, I saw soap coming down the river one day and thought that this was not a good thing. And so I had it tested and it was exactly soap. Mm -hmm. So being an acupuncturist by trade, I started looking into the different things that we could use that were natural and came across the soap nuts. Wow. And so it just kind of grew from there. Wow. I started out with the one product and now we have more. And Literally and metaphorically growing. Yes, yes. <laughs> And everything, as you see, is baby friendly because people ask me about that. Everything sure. is baby friendly. Wow, that's so cool. And like you said, you could eat it if you wanted to. We yes. wouldn't suggest you do that. No, Probably no. Probably doesn't taste no. as good as it is for, you it, know, washing things. But No, it doesn't <laughs> taste good, but I have done it all just to make sure. So, oh. and I'm still here. And that's important, though, you know. That's it one is. of those things that you would hope your children, you know, never get into something and they know better than to do that. But sometimes the little kids, you know, they just are curious and right. want to explore. So that's good to know. And we appreciate you doing that for us. Well, thank taste, you. Testing it out. Thank you. So where are these being sold? Old. Where can we find them? Um, you can find them in my newest location at uh, Bill's in Oregon. We're mm -hmm. also in Festival Foods. We are in all three high V's. We're in Yahara. We're in the Granary up in um, Baraboo. Awesome. And then we're in other states, but Good. locally that's where we are. So a lot of different locations if you're interested or want to try it out, and you can Absolutely. find it. Absolutely, and you can get a hold of me and I'll be happy to give you free samples. Oh, there you have it if you want to test it out. Perfect. And Absolutely. I know there's a big event coming up too, and that's the MREA Fair. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that for those who may not be familiar? Right, and that's happening this weekend up at Custer just outside of Stevens Point. It's the Midwest Renewable Energy Fair. It's the longest largest running sustainable energy fair as far as I know in the world. About wow. 20,000 to 30,000 people arrive and it is incredible. Anything that can help this earth, you're going to find it there. Wow. 
Very, very yeah. cool. And you'll be there. I will you'll be, be there. You'll be a part of it. I am always there. Awesome. I started four years ago, and this I think this is my fifth year now, I believe. Awesome. So what type of products will you be selling there? I will be selling our concentrated powder, our soap nuts in the bag, our dishwasher pods, our laundry pods, and our baby laundry pods. Wow. Awesome. And any more information on soap nuts you'd like to share with us? The main thing I want to share with you is that there are no petrochemicals in any of these products and that's what we have a challenge with with this earth are okay. the petrochemicals and we need to get away. We can all talk about helping the earth but unless you actually do something to take action and make things better, it's not going to happen. Right. So all of these products are not only energy friendly, earth friendly, but they're very cost effective. One load, one little bag of these nuts will do five to eight loads, maybe ten loads of wash, which makes it about wow. eight cents a load. Wow, yeah. I'm so intrigued. Oh, yeah. I'm really excited to try it out, hopefully. And You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Everybody that uses it loves it. And you That's can so cool. shave and wash your hair with the bar soap. And wow. It's amazing. Awesome. So before we go, information again about maybe your website, where they can find you, yes. and also about the fair. You can find me on SoapNutLady.com. You can also find me on Facebook on The Soap Nut Lady. And the MREA Fair this weekend is a three-day event beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning, going until 10 o'clock at night uh, for three days. The Sunday, it ends at 4. But I would highly suggest that you come up there. If you've got the time, come on up. There's music, food, good beer, lots of stuff. And soap nuts. And soap nuts. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today, Peggy. Thank you I appreciate so much. It. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching Talk of the Town. Tune in next time only on Channel 57.